Hello everyone, this is Matt and you're listening to the Project Offbeat podcast, the show that takes you off the beaten path where Lance and I, two corporate 9to5 professionals, interview non-corporate guests with unique offbeat and careers. So Lance, here we are, episode one of a new season. You know, uh, I'm guessing when people hear this, no, uh, it will be the start of the new year. So Lance, I have a question for you. Do you have a new year's resolution or like a Christmas wish for Project Offbeat? Right. Alam mo yung uh, uh, new year's resolution ko for Project Offbeat is um, that we can continue to stay consistent, no? I mean, uh, we were just coming from a season break of around three months and it felt good, you know, not to be thinking about so many interviews and so many editing and whatnot, no? And sometimes there's this temptation na gusto mong, uh, you know, itabi na lang sana yung podcast, right? But, you know, we want to tell the stories, diba? And we want to stay consistent for our listeners then. So, sana matuloy natin to, Matt, uh, in the coming year. Yeah. And I guess my New Year's wish or, uh, yeah, Christmas wish siguro for the podcast is that we get to, uh, parang we have a wish list of guests kasi that we want to interview. So, hopefully, you know, we for have sure. uh, uh, like a big, massive guest down the end of the year. You know? So, anyway, let's get this started. In today's episode, we're featuring the off-beaten career of a sports journalist, a career that involves a lot of research, following up on leads, and hours of watching and reporting on various sports events. It's a career that requires a keen eye for detail, curiosity, and the ability to operate under pressure. You know, our guest today is actually a fellow Atenista. But we're actually scheduling this fresh off a UAAP championship. No? So medyo sikat talaga kami ngayon, Ateneo Gaidon. She's working in Ateneo Gaidon before. And she works as a sports reporter for Rappler for over five years now. She's covered several key sports events like the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, the 2019 Southeast Asian Games, you know, the FIBA World Cup, and of course, the UAAP. Uh, she's interviewed amazing, amazing athletes, coaches, and personalities like, of course, our weightlifting champion, Heidelin Diaz, our, you know, pole vaulting champion, EJ Obiena, Agatha Wong, Yang Giao, you know, and Lex Coach and whatnot, right? So, and dami na niyang na-interview through her years. Our guest today is freelance sports journalist Beatrice or Bigo. She joins the Project Offbeat podcast today to talk about the career of being a female sports journalist. Welcome to the show, B. Hi, everyone. Man. Hi, B. Yeah. Hi, B. Good morning. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, so B, uh, let's get this started. Let's talk about, you know, th- it's been an incredible past few days for sports. As, as Lance mentioned, recently Ateneo just reclaimed its championship back from UP. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention or acknowledge the global epic spectacle that was the World Cup, where Lionel Messi won the World Cup for his native Argentina. And what an epic finale from EJ Obienes securing the bronze in Eugene to the Philippine women's football team qualifying for the World Cup. What do you think has been the biggest, brightest standout for you? Wow, that was a lot. But then actually my the biggest standout for the year for me or personally because Alex Ayala won the U.S. singles open as well. So Actually, that one and the F- of course the women's football qualifying for the FIFA World Cup. I think okay, definitely F- the FIFA World Cup has like the head is like the headline of the year mm-hmm. just because no Philippine team has ever qualified for the World Cup and now the world knows why the FIFA World Cup is the top one of the top leagues in the world, not just in football, but then really um getting that's the league that gets uh, or that's the event that gets new football fans in new fans into sport um you know i just checked this morning lionel messi's um instagram post is now at 67 million which is That's the crazy. most like instagram <laughs> post in the in history so definitely um philippines qualifying for the fifa women's uh world cup and alex ayala um winning the us open sing junior singles because mm-hmm. I've covered Alex actually since she was 11 or 12. Like, pumunta lang ako dati sa Valle Verde. And it's just like, who's this girl? <laughs> yeah. I just got, parang <laughs> tipong on the text message siya na, we interview mo siya, ganun, because she just won Le Petitas France and she's going to, she got the wild card to the French Open. So I'm like, huh? Wow, never heard of her. Yeah. Then 
that's where it all started also just following her career since she was 11 crazy <laughs> yeah as a, as a sports journalist ba you have this feeling of like uh similar to a coach na sobrang proud you know you've seen them from the you know from their their youngest careers now all superstars in their own rights right do you also feel the same thing uh, when you see these people succeed in their own right? Yeah, so kaya, ano, very special si Alex because I really she's the first athlete that I've covered na uh, since bata talaga. So that that's where you see na oh like the show. and it's just so amazing how she just started winning and winning and you know taking parang she just like made the most out of her opportunities and it's not like other tennis players like for example yep. Coco Golf Golf na ba, na 15 years old na sa open na siya like the women's open but then see si Alex like you could see that we're all celebrating the small wins that okay yep. she's now the top in juniors that was now she's in the WTA so um that and now she's like top 200 in the top 200 ranks then and then winning the winning her first singles um grand slam in the juniors happened this year so really good that i i just love the pace of her uh, success then it's for the longevity talaga in her career i think the first time i've heard of alex ayala was also from you and it's been so inspiring to see all of these you know philippine athletes emerging you now from the past few years and now we're kind of slowly reaping the benefits of like grassroots programs and hopefully we can see it um prosper in the next few years you now but uh I, I think you also have some experience with you know being at an athlete yourself right? you were part of the varsity swimming team i think that's when i first knew you from my sister can you talk about that and how it kind of like how, how did that kind of pave the way towards this journalism career yeah, so I was a competitive swimmer for eight years. Uh, started in um, grade around grade six, so when I was twelve, and then I I swam twice in the UAP for Ateneo. So that was the twenty fourteen championship. But then I didn't really contribute much. It was just like okay, see so you, champion tayo, yeah, for OBF, let's go. But then being a student athlete has really helped me in my career, just because I. I have the empathy also to to just interview other athletes as well. Uh, I just knew and experienced what they also went through, that the discipline that is needed, the sacrifices that had to be made also. Like even though I didn't really yeah. reach like a national team or elite level, but then I'm very much um, close with people in my family who are in the elite level. So I also know what they go through and and like the shift the month started when in high school i was also part of the ecolets which is the school publication of my high school ica and then i i honestly just joined because i didn't want to be fomo with my barcada because all my <laughs> young barcada they, right. they just wanted to be like oh sige let's go lit and uh, the lit sta- literary stuff oh art stuff ganun so sabi ko Hala, lahat kayo nasa isang org. Ako rin. <laughs> Sige. So, I... Yeah. So, it was all not, ano, not really, like, the best intentions. But then, well, when I got to the swim team naman in Ateneo, when I was training in the summer, one of my seniors, si Max Austria, he was the externals manager of the Gaidon. Then, he mm. was asking me, oh, syempre, like, you start yeah. recruiting na, diba? that's how you get a head start summer pa lang yeah. recruit na. oh join the guide I'm like no way you right no you really have to join the guide I was like siguro almost every day join na join na and but at that time I was very um you know I think it's just my first year in college I know that's going to be difficult like with the academics and then I'm juggling it po with the UAP it might be really difficult a lot of things on my plate but then yeah so I was like sige na nga, I'll I'll go for it and then um usually I would join like maybe the feature staff ganun, and then the editor naman I saw her line and because since I made the decision to join I sabi ko sige like I have to be competitive like you know I have to make sure that I get in because it's difficult to get into the guide on right so yeah um 
Parang nakita ko yung linya ng feature staff. Tapos sabi ko, ay, ang haba. Tapos sa sports ko lang tao, kundo na lang ako. <laughs> so, that's how it started. And the rest Pero, is history. Okay. And the rest is history. <laughs> yes, the rest is history. As in, another um, very not the best intentions, but then, Um, yeah. They made me cover like my teammates, like sila Jesse Lacuna, ganun. So that yeah. was my first wow. ever sports mm-hmm. feature, <laughs> Olympian na kaagad. <laughs> so and then yeah, you know, and then you get exposed to all the other sports in Ateneo. But I remember yeah. first year ko, um, I traveled all the way to Dasmariñas, Cavite to cover the track and field um competition because yeah. it was held there. Tapos mm-hmm. um fencing and then. Siguro, because of my uh, stint in Gaida, na-cover ko lahat ng sports. And then, how I joined Rappler naman was in 2017. That was the year I was going to graduate. Nagkaroon ng job opening sa Rappler. Tapos, parang medyo yeah. ini-ignore ko pa. Like, in January. Like, mm. uh, like yeah. for context, because my course was business management. So, mm, yep. totally yeah. not related to Com, and you know, there's also your mafia China. Oh, like what family business, or why don't you join big corporations like BNG, Nestle, ganon. So yeah. I was like, not. So I was just like, oh, maybe it wasn't for me until in April of that year, a month before I graduated. Um, there was an email that was sent to me. Na, guy, uh, the Rappler was really looking for sports reporters, and so they thought of. Now going into Guido now mag recruit ka na sa sa because yeah. the managing editor of Rappler that time was Chai Hoffelenia so she also taught in Ateneo so mm, parang, and then okay. it was four months mm-hmm. diba four January <laughs> naglabas yung posting four months hindi sila nakahanap ng potential replacement for the people leaving the sports reporter post of yeah. Rappler so sabi ko na, okay na this is the second time that I was actually sent the job posting and this time mm. straight to my email na parang it must yeah. mean something. So, I yeah. tried it out. The yeah. nag-apply ako kahit, you know, the qualifications. I wasn't qualified in terms of yung course ko. Hindi naman ako communications graduate, yeah. ganun. But then, when I went to the interview with my former boss, si ano, Ryan Songalia, ano, I was hired, I was given the job offer on the spot. So, I was just like, oh, Wow. Oh, well, it's April. Wow. I have a job. I'd like to dissect that. Be parang. Uh, uh-uh. do, do you think that what contributed the most to them, you know, giving you that offer on the spot? No, do you think it has to do with your athlete background? Because you know, you're, you're we're seeing more and more athletes today grabbing the mic, you know, starting their own media platforms. Right? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Is it? Is it something like that? Or Um, do you think, you know, for our listeners na gusto rin maging sports journalist like yourself, di ba? Parang meron pang ibang ways just to get a head start as well. Similar to your experience in Rappler. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I were to dissect that. So, um, when I was very, starting ng first year, second year college ako, until third year, I studied really hard. I said, really hard to get my QPI up. So, ito na, right. like guys, if you want to graduate with honors, <laughs> but still, I don't get, like, like get a job that you're passionate about. So, what I did the one was, I studied really hard. Like, uh, got my QPI really high. And by the third year, kasi, it gets harder, di ba, in Ateneo. Yeah. So, and I went on JTA pa. So, you know, I was, so medyo, that was the time na, okay, medyo, bumababa na yung QPI. Pero it's okay. I had a huge buffer. <laughs> so, and by the time I was fourth year, it was like super chill na. Kasi I worked hard in my first three years. So, by fourth year, I was in almost in all UAP sports events. <laughs> so, wow. that that's not only basketball. It was basketball, ball. Yung talaga, fencing, taekwondo. Like, dinadaanan ko lahat. And then, in the morning, my routine would be going to the trainings ng men's volleyball in the morning, women's football, parang mag lang ako. Or it's like, oh, kamusta sa shoot? Because we do like the sports primer. And then um, that year was also, I had a meeting with um, the UA University Athletics Office. And yeah. that was the year they really challenged me. Like sa Gaidon, it was like, you know, the mm-hmm. problem with Gaidon is super inconsistent on coverage that like, 
that it was all basketball, volleyball. That, but wow. you cover all sports. Mm. So yeah. I made a system, and I um got. And I'm so thankful that the um, staff that I got, they were just so committed and so dedicated yeah. to the vision din. Kasi big challenge yun sa amin eh, na yep. on 100% coverage. But then that year, we were able to do 100% coverage. Kasi parang I also took it upon my responsibility that I have to be that role model also for my yeah. ano, staff. That I'll be, I'm not just... um at the back, like seated the, on, behind my computer editing your stories, but that I'm also exerting effort to mm-hmm. go and be with like the athlete and celebrate their moments with them. Then. Yeah. So I think that was so parang yung that gave me visibility also in the professional level because uh, I was already friends with people from ABS-CBN News, Tiebreaker mm-hmm. Times, and um, so and like they already know me they they've seen me around and that gave me an advantage then uh, yeah. when i was applying when i applied for rappers like oh yeah like she was the one re- like producing these you uh, know these like good social media posts na parang nandun, like and also the stories ng guy don parang may pa level up and that's not only because of me naman it, it was because of my mm-hmm. staff also like they're all talented, like super duper talented. Um, right now, I'm really just so proud of you know where they are also like in life. They they're still pursuing their passion for sports journalism and all that. So, you know, very proud lang talaga. And you know, it was just um the little it also and because I was a student athlete before and I know what it yeah. means to make some sacrifices then. You know, like these sacrifices um eventually created a lot of impact also not only on my career but also on the careers of the nice. people we caught co- the student athletes we covered and the uh, the staff that I was leading you know you know B I absolutely love the sports primers and I think I do remember the the year that you started maybe covering more sports is because I started seeing more of swimming for some reason. I was like, oh, usually I, I, we only see like basketball, volleyball, but then, you know, you can see other sports that maybe other people are passionate about. Like for myself, it's swimming. You know? So yeah, you covered a lot about, you know, what you did back in college, but let's go into Rappler Naman, which is like, maybe mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a level up or whatnot, but obviously working in a newsroom, getting your feet wet in that environment, um, obviously, it's a bigger nationwide kind of publication. No? So, parang how was that? How was that atmosphere? How was that environment? Parang what were the growing pains through it? No? Uh, oh my gosh! Like looking back, I have a lot to thank for for Rappler for taking even a <laughs> chance on me because you know if you would, I recently have been on. Yeah, like I've been on the camera, right? The, I've been on mm. um the news of even yung sa church ko, ganun. And everyone's like, wow, be like, you're so natural. But honestly, I was just like, if you looked at my first uh, YouTube video, <laughs> my first Rappler talk, I wasn't even opening my mouth. I wasn't projecting. So, and then even yung, uh, pag, kasi, as in, Parang sinalang, the re- when I entered rap, there's sinalang ako agad sa SEA Games. There was no, mm. uh, there was no break or like some like, oh, level, like little by little you get there. That it was, was the SEA like, Games here, okay. no? The Philippines. 27, no, no, um, 2017. Ah, no, no, no. So, Malaysia. So ah, Malaysia, I was, okay. an, I was here in the Philippines but covering from the Philippines. So I had to, Parang inaabangan ko lahat ng athletes na umuwi. So, yun yung task ko while breaking news breaking the news of lawn ball, ganun, yung rugby, <laughs> yung mga... Again, not the ano, very popular sports. Ganun, pero nandun lang ako as assist and still giving them coverage. And I was doing the Rappler talks of equestrian and si Nico Welgas din. So, ayun, parang sinalang ako agad <laughs> and um i remember as in like si miss chai because like she knew that you know i wasn't really like a communications graduate pero mm-hmm. sobrang patient lang niya and i'm so grateful for yung editors ko noon na 
um I ju- I really made some mistakes. Like even the um how I wrote articles wasn't really the very you know wasn't as you know, it wasn't the format of news ganon. So there may mga objective stuff that I had to learn that you know in my mind I was like oh man I could have learned it and I, if I actually took a journalism course or whatever in right. college. Pero parang ano lang, um it was just I think Rappler really gave me the space to learn. So I didn't really need to learn it in college. But then they gave me a, the space to learn. And uh, on my part, it, I took it up as my responsibility to also deliver. So learn fast. Um, yeah. that's what, but then also have the confidence to trust in what I have also learned and applied before in my stint in Gaidon, which is yung, um, the live tweeting. I think that's what really got people Hero to know. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, so we live tweeted and it was really a lot of practice and even oh um, breaking the news in Rappler. Dati yeah. in Gaidon may practice pa na, okay, one hour dapat may article na, pero in Rappler, wow. it's one minute after the game. You oh have to have an article wow. already. So, wow. so those were the things that I had to adjust to, pero I was just ano, banking on ano, confidence and the willingness to mm. learn and deliver. La. Yeah. B, I think, um, sabi mo nga, ano, one minute you've got to release an article, right? I'd want to go into that. Like, uh, what are the techniques? What are the strategies? What is your style of writing for you to be able to meet those deadlines? Diba? Kasi, I, I, I follow a couple of, you know, uh, rappler people like maybe Patricia Evangelista or Rambo Talabong na medyo investigative yung dating nila, eh, diba? Um, but yours, you, wala na investigative dito, eh. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be ready, you gotta be quick, right? As you, you, you mentioned earlier, what are the techniques, Mm-mm. diba? Uh, as a sports journalist like yourself, to be able to meet those hard deadlines, even those live tweeting, I bet you're not even, are you even still appreciating or watching the game as you tweet those things, diba? Parang, how, how do you become so fast in these things? Uh, the first one is practice, definitely. So, um, when I was training young staff girls sa Gaidon, we would just really just watch a game. Uh, that was part of the ano, oh. yung test na binibigay ko. Watch like a short highlights, then type on the spot. Ganun, uh, how <laughs> okay. You're gonna compose the sentences. You don't have to make it... Ano, it doesn't. Ha- you don't have to overthink it. So, yeah. kaya it's practice talaga. Cause right, honestly, when you live tweet, I really just you really get to tweet what's on your head. And I I learned how to live tweet by also watching and how the other people live tweet. What are the words mm-hmm. that they use? And then you know the only thing that you have to make sure in a live tweet is what happened and the score. So you and, as in, and the hashtag. So for what happened, score hashtag. What happened, score hashtag. Ganun. So um, it it will take a lot. You'll need a lot of practice. Talaga. So I had four years of that practice, and then yeah. um, and then the other thing, the man, like you you were asking, na are you still enjoying the game? It's of mm-hmm. course you have to know your priorities. Like don't really have you could. You could still kind of enjoy the game, but I get it as a sports fan, Deva. Right. I'm sure Lance and Matt, you you know the feeling that actually like focus on the game, focus on exactly. the game. I all exactly. know that feeling, pero pero that's another sacrifice that you have to make. Na yeah, your priority right. is to deliver. Right. So mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, like yeah, you could see good shots, cool, yeah. ganun, pero I have to tweet that, ganun. Right, <laughs> uh-uh. right. Bawi na lang sa highlights. <laughs> yeah, oh, and you and I think ano, like for me, I had to reframe my mindset. Then uh, I'm there not as a sports fan, but as a sports yeah, journalist, yeah, yeah. and it's already a privilege Ooh. for me to be doing this kind of work. And also, and it's something yeah. that I enjoy. Na parang nako contribute din ako sa well, sa fan experience din yon, de ba? As someone yeah. writing articles as. Exactly. And someone as like not everyone is in the room in the yeah. stadium, so because yeah. mm-hmm. the tickets go on, but then they're able to still experience it because of the work that we do. Exactly. Yeah, I absolutely love the live tweets. 
as uh, as yeah. someone who doesn't have the live stream exactly. all the time. Yeah, exactly. And even in the Philippine coverage, no, uh, watching local games are a bit harder without the paywall. Diba? Walang libre. Mm, yes, I mean, yes. swerte ka na kung may lumabas mm. sa Facebook Live na illegal streamer, <laughs> diba? But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. wala ka talaga masyado unless you're you're signed into Smart or Signal, right? So, yeah, I, we appreciate what you do, B. So, B, you kind of mentioned it already. And I think Lance already mentioned something about investigative journalists. Um, but, yeah, j- just give us a peek behind the curtain. No? How is covering sports may be very different from other types of journalism. And can you tell us, like, how is it better or how is it worse than, you know, mm. other types of coverage? <laughs> oh, I love this question. So how I could say it's different is because sports is like a vehicle for many things. So the mm-hmm. sports is a social aspect is a social aspect and it could it's also very interdisciplinary meaning yep. um you could use sports for diplomacy you could use sports for political motivations you could use that's, sports that's for entertainment you could use sports for business yeah so mm-hmm. that's a, so that's the thing like i am someone covering an interdisciplinary um type mm. of uh, yeah, it's a it's something that- very interdisciplinary so um and What's interesting about my job or my role as, in a, as a Raptor sports reporter, because there are many rules. Eh. So, yung iba, oh, kau yung nasa basketball, oh, kau yung nasa collegiate sports, then me, Philippine sports governance, and that means that I was the lead reporter of the Sea Games in 2019, and um, and I think if you would observe how big coverages like the 2019 Sea Games, the Olympics, and even the Qatar FIFA World Cup, ang daming yeah. stories na okay, like ito y- like so, like says Qatar, de ba? Okay, the migrant workers were a story. Yeah. So the Tokyo yeah. Olympics, it was the COVID 19 and the protest and um a lot of ano din yung mga and all, there's also yung intersection of um gender ganon and yung sa sea games naman it was mm. <laughs> hugely political ang um, hugely political yeah. so um the good thing about sports is that it kind of gives me, it, uh, and being sports interdisciplinary for me it kind of gives me some sort of joy na nagiging it softens the the power like if compared to hard news na okay this is really yeah. the issue this is the problem ganun pero yeah. sports mm. is a soft power mm. when it comes to political nice to motivation so yeah it soft it softens it but then syempre the the annoying thing about it is just like if you were an athlete you'd be like you know talagang sports is like something that I'm passionate about why are you mixing politics into it yeah. na parang Um, it kind of sports can kind of be the mask of the the real issue, you know? and yeah. that is something that's frustrating. And for someone covering the politics of sports, naman, as in, um, I really follow the dirty and the ugly side of it, also of the yeah. you know, in the Philippine Olympic Committee, the Philippine mm-hmm. Sports Commission, and the issues in between, yung what happened with. EJ Obiena also parang um it also as a journalist I think for in all in all sections naman there's like an aspect talaga na yeah. I really have to give myself a mental health break or yeah. I had to de- detach also and yun and then parang like for example Lance you said you follow Pat Evangelista right just imagine yeah. like be- her beat is trauma reporting so exactly everything that piece is dead bodies and even the um stories of just abuse ganun yung mga sex ano yung mga human girls and women's rights din yung kasi yung kina cover mm-hmm. niya so ayun like i'm also into that na parang i've also covered athletes who were um sexually abused and all that so just hearing their stories also parang i have to also give grace to myself and yeah. know that and and parang process the things make sure that i process them <laughs> yun yeah it, it, basically you're like parang medyo nagiging as a journalist you you become a sponge to all of these stories you know and sometimes you've, mm-hmm. you've got to you know you know know how to suppress them know how to 
balance them out or else ikaw rin yung parang magkakaroon ng parang sobrang bigat na burden listening to all these stories no i mean when i see pat evangelista live before she seems like parang ay- ayoko kausapin may may aura na siya na parang nakaka nakaka wow <laughs> she's been through a lot no you parang the that, life no? experience you know? yeah the life experience man uh she's been through so many things no b i, I i'd like to you know somewhat pivot to that no what with what you mentioned diba Uh, you've also covered different kinds of scenarios na rin. Um, as a sports journalist, uh, I, I'm sure you also co- covered, you know, male-dominated sports, right? Or even, you know, going into the stories of, you know, championships or defeats in a male locker room, di ba? How do you navigate towards that, di ba? How do you, as, as a woman, di ba, um, pinapansin ka ba, di ba? How is, was it hard to get them to warm up talking to a woman uh, and, and giving you know, their their insights to the game, right? Uh, pinapansin ka ba nila and what not, no? How, how do you navigate through a locker room of male dominance? I think na swerte ako din na the first male team that I covered talaga was the Ateneo men's volleyball team. And mm. um, if yeah. you looked at the history of the men's volleyball team, they started off with no championship. As in, literally, mm. like, Ateneo was always, <laughs> like, 7th, 6th, uh, UAAP ng men's volleyball. It was the yeah. first year ni Mark Espe. It was the first time that first. Final Four. And batchmates kami ni Mark. And then mm-hmm. I started covering um, the men's volleyball team team in 2014. So the year after. So as in, they are the... And if you're covering um, a team that hasn't really like won anything or has uh, no, still... Uh, parang still out there to prove themselves like they're really just more humble like honestly like i'm just speaking from no, I get experience you. Yeah. So there's actually yeah. there's actually more more humility they're so much more welcome and open to media coverage also so uh that's where i really got to like build relationships with an uh, coach o and then like even to the mm. mark so they were like honestly generally super welcoming super friendly yeah. i felt yeah. I know, like it was a like being welcomed into a family and just watching them win that first championship and I covered them. Then on to the last two years ko in Ateneo, champions silang lahat. As um, parang in a way like na swear na na I nakiride din ako sa success nila in a way. But then I was the media, I was the one ano. I was their beat writer. Like, I was ride ako as their beat writer. Beat writer. Kaya, um, the volleyball press corps would know who I am na. Because, I uh, it's like, okay, like, I see this girl on um, just standing outside their dog out. And then, um, be, yeah. the girl there in the final. And then, wow, it's Ateneo history na three-peat champion pa. Ganun. And then, she yeah. was writing all these stories. Mm-hmm. So, um, just knowing that ano, I had the capacity, I guess, to um, deliver good content and good features and good news also about the men's yeah. volleyball team. When I went out to cover other male teams, uh, parang may some sort of respect na, yeah. din, na I'm like not uh, entirely a nobody. Pero it's yeah. more of like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, like I, I've read your stories and all that. Galing. Galing. Um, okay. Um, one to two random things that a sports journalist sees behind the scenes. Uh, you know that you know the fans don't see. You know before I when I helped around in Miracle Ball social media. So pumunta ako sa locker room, de ba? Nagulat ako. Sobrang daming bananas. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't expect that they actually eat those before and after the game. Uh, and they really take it literally along with a huge loaf of gardenia bread. No. Uh, how about you? Any random things that uh, fans don't see behind the scenes that uh, you guys see? <laughs> First thing that came into my mind was Eliza Valdez's dinugaan. <laughs> As in, really? na ko yung dinug. Oh, kasi Eliza is from Batangas, de ba? So there was right. one time na I was riding in the bus with the um, women's volleyball team because I was covering women's volleyball that then. So. Uh, may dala siyang dinugaan. 
sobrang sarap niya. And then, yung, then in White Plains, we pass through there. And then, di ba, may mga puto vendors. As right, in, right. Mm, the, yeah. sila, ano, the team would be like, Kuya, Kuya, stop! We need to buy puto. Wow. Ayun. So, there's, there's one cute, ano, random thing. Parang it helps humanize them in a way, no? I mean, I guess, because mm-hmm. we're so used to just watching them scoring and, and doing their thing, but you don't see, really see the human behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, B, uh, it was really interesting what you said earlier, where you said covering sports, it's not just a sport itself, it has layers to it. It, it can touch upon many aspects, interdisciplinary, nga, di ba, yung snap mo. So, parang, I guess, um, right now, I, I kind of want to understand, the man, what are your layers, B? What's, like, your, basically your why, no? As to why you get up every morning or get up, every day during college to cover all of these sports that maybe you're not even that familiar with to then um, not even planning for it. You go to Rappler, the newsroom, you get your feet wet uh, for maybe five years. Then now you're a freelance journalist doing your own thing, right? So why why do you continue to kind of pursue this path of sports journalism? Uh, Ayan. Mm -mm. Parang a lot of it also right now that it's been like almost a decade that I've been in sports. And honestly, the why changes and the why grows also, grows deeper also. Because I guess like, for example, when I was in high school, my why was the swim team in Ika, sila Chloe Daos, Shannon mm-hmm. Nang, Celine Demsoy, they were um, winning gold medals for the Ika swim team, but then they weren't getting coverage because people just didn't know that they were winning. So yeah. I was like, you know, I really want to make sure that they get the coverage that they want. So that's why I wrote about the swim team when I was in high school. Then in college, Deba, it's the challenge of giving everyone equal coverage, 100% mm. coverage on guidance. So that became my why because, you know, all everyone deserved coverage also then when i was in rappler a lot of it was you know i'm it's you're you're in this uh why don't you just really want to like produce like the best and the most like unique kind of content and like actually dig deep into the stories of these Mm -hmm. athletes that like i met also that you know they're heavily covered by other media, but then I'm sure that there's something more going on. So just ano, and it gave and actually um working in rap gave me more of a um what gave me more of an experience of what it's like working in a team, you know. So also like a lot of it was like all just a lot of learning talaga na hey like I'm learning something new. Um, this is like what we're doing now. So um my why in Rappler wasn't actually much of a personal why but it was the why of the organization na okay we're still you know we had so many whys eh, in Rappler na defend press freedom na okay this is what we're showing the world that we're still continuing to do our jobs even though that we're under attack we're under threats and then okay we also are very an innovative organization so it was like um, uh, it was Yun ya, parang all the new multimedia stuff, let's try it, let's learn like a new process and all that. So a lot of it was for me, my five years in Raptor was really built on also yung ano, why ng Raptor. And I believed in it and I aligned with the vision. Yeah. And then now that I'm freelance, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I've been freelance since February. And I guess like the grace that I have right now is um, since I'm doing research also for women's sports content, my why is like, you know, there's really something new here. Um, there's really something more to improve in sports. Like, mm. um, it, I feel like there's just, like, you could say that uh, the Philippine, like, people have said that also that Philippines is more backward in terms of many things, but sports included. Mm-hmm. And ang dami kong na-receive na opinions din na when I was still in, um, when I was covering the local UAP na, they were like, you know, you should go abroad. I think you could, like, learn more. You can thrive mm-hmm. more with the skill yep. set that you have. Mm-hmm. Pero parang a lot of 
but it really just grounded me more na because like I have these skills. I have my network, my global network also na I actually could bring in and like just increase the opportunities in the Philippines. So that has, and also like um just knowing how like yung, yung financial financial challenges ng sports and media. Like, yeah. like mm-hmm. money is so difficult to like get and money has always been an issue in these two fields and I'm in both sports and media so parang my a, a lot of my motivation really comes from you know how do you make media and sports viable also nice. so yeah and also so I'm just really um being patient also with myself in learning the new things uh, just keep learning lang and then hopefully we get something that and um, can materialize talaga. You know, B, I I love, love, love what you said about how your why kind of differentiates per phase of your life and kind of deepens as well. But um, the, the guests that we have here, because I am very strong in why nila as to why they continue to pursue a path. But it's very refreshing to hear now. You know, it doesn't have to be a strong why all the time. It could kind of evolve and change and adapt as you go, as, as you grow now through your career. Uh, mm-hmm. I, Next, we kind of want to ask about how our audience, if anyone's listening, who wants to kind of pursue the same path that you're in, in sports journalism. No? Do you have any advice for people out there? Obviously, it's, it covers a lot of fields. Like You can go to print, you can go to broadcast, you can go to audio, you can go to social media. You know, uh, you, of course, have experience in all of them, uh, uh, as I know. No? So... But um, how would you kind of uh, give advice to people who want to go into it? Yeah, um, they don't really have to be scared on starting also. Mm-hmm. Na it could be daunting then. And um, I think there's a lot of hope right now just because like we're in the quote unquote the golden age of media honestly like people say oh journalism is dead like there are <laughs> you'll hear a lot of comments like oh like tv no one's watching tv anymore but then you know there's still people around the world and or you just have to like right now the biggest challenge and the biggest yet the biggest opportunity of being in sports and in media is like finding where people are in the online mm. space, in the digital space, yeah. and how to keep them engaged. So wherever people are, journalism is always going to thrive. So parang first is to like just be that like, don't be afraid to like start somewhere because honestly, like we just don't know how the world's gonna go. And maybe you would like ne- you never know. Um maybe like a 17 year old like um 17 year old high school graduate like especially mm. since K to 12 na ngayon na oh maybe mm. like would find like machempuhan siya sa isang ano strategy na mm. sobrang innovative ganun so don't be afraid to like ano start talaga because everyone including me like I started from nothing naman talaga like uh, mm. no one in my family was ever a journalist no one was really into mm. sports so suddenly I was like some unicorn and mm. born into this family so mm. it, yun nga, parang I also had to um, like you know figure out who my own community is also just had to be assertive also in those areas and be bold in and confident in what I do even though sometimes you know there are doubts but then Parang, ano lang, be patient then. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, B, are there any um, resources you took um, that got you to where you are right now? Did you take any course? You know, did you take any training? I think you mentioned Gaidon, right? Should our audience also try out that one? Like, just get into that fire. Just freaking cover something. I don't know how they they will get their own media pass para makakover sila ng isang event. Or can a fan, you know, oh, can a fan actually just buy a ticket, you know, and instead of being a fan, do some, you know, journalism on the spot as a training to become a journalist like yourself? Paano yun, paano yun? Any resources that you can provide? 
all that you said, absolutely, you can talaga. Because um, number one, the first one, the my path, right? Yung joining a school publication. Yeah, like yeah. it really gets you into the mm. discipline. So I, exactly. but I would say that yeah, we have so many like content creators out there. Mm-hmm. But what makes a journalist stand out, and for and a journalist stands out by be, having the discipline of journalism. Na mm. it's really like giving the context and just not ano yung like it's not anymore like yung uh, okay no bias ganun pero it's more of like explaining the truth talaga so you're yeah. really holding on mm. to like a certain truth so and that's journalism already and um, like trying so very ano like protectors of the truth ganun and then um for ano naman the second option you know you just become a and a content creator like you're a fan and all that so that absolutely you can i said you could be a er, er, anyone honestly could be a content creator na is just um right like you'd have to really weigh your commitment your commitment yeah. level to it and even you know even if you're starting something because um you need a why for a certain content that you put out and mm. that's where you have to you can parang for me i you can but then it's really not recommended um also that parang wala kang plan also especially if you want to take it seriously then but then you never know like i yeah. i never really like um would like to like i'm just like a person who believes that um like Miracles happen if you actually have a plan. Like, yeah. like, but then anything could happen, talaga. So, um, just go ahead and try. Like, kahit ano, pr- for practice lang, yeah, go lang na mm. mag-tweet ka lang. You never know, nag-blow, mag-blow up yung tweet mo, <laughs> diba? And yeah. suddenly, like, Twitter commentary ka na, ganun, and all that. <laughs> yeah, would you, would you say all you need is a, uh, at, back in the day, it was a pen and paper, now... I guess all you need is a phone and maybe a small camera or maybe your phone then as a camera, right? Uh, are those the tools that are just the bare minimum? Anything else that, you know, people would want to go to uh, when they're in an event or in a game? Data, both, both networks. Data. <laughs> <Can> I, <laughs> yeah. both networks. You're right. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> May ibang arena na talagang walang globe or walang smart, right? Uh-oh. So super yeah. agree, super Mag-dual agree. Sim ka na. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Do you guys have leaves, naman? Kapag uh, mga sports journalists, meron naman, no? Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> really? Like, that one, I have never experienced a holiday what? ever what? in my life. So, parang when I, I message people on holidays, they're like, "It's a holiday." I was just like, "Oops, sorry. It's five years of having Shit. no holidays." So. Oh my god. Yeah. Syempre kasi then, holidays yung mga ha- parang biggest games eh no. Kasi more and more people can yeah. actually tune in. Yeah. Oh, uh, but I mean like the biggest no, the biggest problem is you don't get compensated like the triple pay, double pay. Oh my Malang god. Wala nang OT pay. So, no that's what I was saying na kaya naging big why ko yung ano the financial and the even yeah. the ano parang kalagayan ng mga journalists and people in sports mm-hmm. because they really have they're not compensated well talaga yeah even though sports pero parang dito lang sa atin no business. sa local kasi parang yeah. sa abroad parang sobrang luxurious ma you well, know to be affiliated with the sports in, brand depende rin bro and no <laughs> i think it's ano more of um Philippines in general mahirap lang yumaman in any yeah. other in, in any industry. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. No, that's true. That's true. Sobra sobra. Yeah. B, I think I think when you're trying to be a sports journalist or technically any kind of journalist naman, there is a kind of proving period where you're trying to make a name for yourself and putting your name out there and being a more reputable name in sports, no. So I, I, when I was researching you, I was very curious because you, you also curate kind of what works you've done in the past to create some kind of portfolio. You know? So parang when you were creating your portfolio, is it kind of like intentional thing that I'm going to be doing this so I can uh, be better in kind of social media or, or uh, broadcast or whatnot? Or is it more of like, I was assigned this, I'll do this. Um, then I'll add it to my portfolio. Like how how should how should people get into it? Especially if you want to be like a 
reputable journals such as yourself? How do you create your portfolio? Mm-hmm. Like, I think um, that's why I also recommend going through like a campus publication because a campus publication would be doing story conferences mm. or um, a pitching session. So mm-hmm. yeah. that's where everyone Ooh. gathers and it's like, hey, come with your top three sports ideas so mm-hmm. that we'll discuss it. Let's filter it. Let's get people's input. So that was really good, and you and honestly, like it really formed me. Na okay, like uh, my edit uh, when I was especially when I was first year, I had I will I'm the I plus a lot of ideas, but then my editor will be like, okay, but then like the story is still like you'd have comments that okay, maybe we could bank it yeah. for later, yeah. and then because the competition is still like on like two months from now, we could have and have that story like maybe next month or yep. even yung format na ay and so, suddenly someone has like a really interesting like story like oh pwede na yun yep. pang ba- like a big mm-hmm. headline story so ganun yep. talaga pag ano news and I really learned and now that I'm freelancing kasi dati in Raptor a lot of it is just like okay I have the uh, we're actually yung um our workflow is like okay we have our daily like breaking news stuff but then if we're not doing breaking news we should have at least a feature that we've been working yeah. behind <clears throat> behind yeah. the scenes also so right. uh that's why parang weekly i already have ano din, other features in mm. mind yung parang ano lang on the tail end of my mind na okay kung wala na akong gagawin for the day on my working day i'll work on this but then, yeah. so it's in the bank. But then now that I'm freelancing, wow, like, I'm just so glad that I was trained in that way to know how to pitch a story, like, actually make sure, making sure that I have the experience yeah. to know if the story is even feasible for an yeah. interview, like, has the mm-hmm. acting yeah. contactable. And another thing was I also built my network also in journalism. It's not like you know, I would always ask for the phone numbers of the athletes, contact details, yeah. and then keep in <clears> touch with them on social on social media. Like I really follow yep. them to see what's happening. So, ang daming discipline needed mm. also. And yeah, it might sound boring, but then you know it when you're not because there's sometimes that you know, okay, I gotta get this 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 done in like a short span of time but because i've built my discipline on that mm-hmm. everything's so easy na like okay yeah. here's my here's mm-hmm. the contact here's the i just need to send a text message to make sure to this source to mm-hmm. make sure that you know, to just fact check ganun. everything's easier that way ganun. and you have to be confident then and bold and even like introducing yourself, ganon. Na, hi, I'm B, and I work before it's like, hi, I'm B. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm from Rappler. <laughs> um, may I just get your contact details so that we can, when anything, ha- if anything happens, could contact you, ganon. So yeah, yun. Okay, B. Um, I think in your in your own right right now you're freelancing, right? And possibly, marami rin na uh, mga want to be journalists will start somewhat like that. They're not associated with any company. Like you said, it's so damn hard to get in, right? Let's talk about communities, diba. Right? Parang um, mm. what communities can they maybe follow, you know, learn from? Kunari, uh, I, I want to attribute to one of your works as well, which is the Go Hard Girls. Na napapansin ko, like women athletes and even those um, fans that follow women athletes, diba, right? are slowly really revolving around this Go Hard Girls, you know, media platform. Uh, podcast and even your tweets around around the world, diba? Um, para sa mga wannabes, diba? Meron din ba silang communities that you could recommend uh, learning from or joining into so that they can hone themselves, practice themselves like you mentioned earlier? Yeah. I re- well, I remember there was this like one program in the uh, Tor- University of Toronto that actually mm. um, gives uh, like a year know of like training and like you graduate from the course Ooh, also and right. that's where like it's when an expert actually wants to become a journalist so they actually yeah. equip um ex, like mm. experts who then 
like you know they're researchers are like experts in their own fields and suddenly they want to be a journalist in that field so um these big publications would um would come in and train them and then they'll also give them opportunities to write for them pitch like get mentorship talaga so that's called the Dalai Lama um, foundation mm, sa right, right. University of Toronto yun um eh, well that one uh, medyo uh, syempre you have to apply for it ganun yeah. and yeah like they would recommend that you're like an expert or a um mid career like journalist yeah but then for someone who really really wants to like start somewhere yeah like um right now it's really best to like know where what community you want to serve in. So, because yeah. I think, like, journalism above all is very service-oriented. Na you can't... It's more of, like, if you really want to make impact, it really has to be clean that you're out there to serve the yeah. the user or serve the community. Gonna, like, know th- their problems also. And, mm. but, yeah, because a part of, like, how I write my articles also is just to like kind of help people like when even with my fitness and yung mga fisho, fisho, ano, like nag interview ako ng mga sports physiologists, ganun. So, ayun, like I, it's more of like, oh, you know, this could actually help you. So, know your community, whether it's like you yeah. want to be in women's sport, you want to be in tennis, you want to be basketball, ganun. So, um, when you, wherever you find, ano, an op, like a burden <laughs> that's an opportunity in itself yun Uh-oh. um reading super important is reading lang talaga cuz diba as i said like i grew up i well i grew up like reading live tweets i grew up reading articles also it's it's the same as in until now like i would be asking people to send over your the best like world cup article or content that you <laughs> Scene. And then people were sharing it. Yung New York Times, Athletic, ganon. And I was like, wow, I love it. Yeah, just hearing like more, you know, stories because you know, like it's I'm not in Qatar, but then I really want to experience whatever is happening yeah. there. Yeah, Ganda. yeah. I'll send you a few articles after this if ever. Okay, um, nice, nice. <laughs> then uh, I I'll ask you to listen to Peter Drury. His commentary on football games is majestic anyway yeah um, he is the goat <laughs> yes he is the goat and so i guess anyway uh closing down this this episode of project offbeat looking through your career from uh being part of the ecolets to the guy on the rappler and now a freelance journalist you know it's very inspiring to hear your story um so parang basically we we made project offbeat so that corporate professionals can open their mind to other fields and kind of apply uh, the learnings from those fields to their own uh, corporate uh, workplace. No? So how do you think that your learnings in like sports journalism, how would that help them in uh, their corporate workplace? Yeah, so one, one thing that I learned is like emotional regulation as a journalist. So because... Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I remember I covered the FIBA, um, qua- the FIBA brawl, yung Australia and Philippines, and oh, the I brawl see. just broke out in front of me. Yeah. But then, you know, it's more of like I'm. It's like the discipline of like you know, later na ang shock. I got pull out my mobile phone and like start like working. And I think like a lot of people, because in the corporate workplace, you know, you're working with a lot of people, you're dealing with a lot of stress, a lot of projects. And um it can get and when things go wrong, um there's a lot of people who tend to like I know parang bla- blame other people or like look to the problem instead of like mm-hmm. finding an immediate solution first. So I think that's what journalism like helped me also na it's like when I encountered problems okay we gotta be flexible like super flexible adapt ka aga, like you know because we really have to deliver it's really very vision oriented goal oriented and as Lan said putting the news out agad eh, I'm just like I don't have time to like um get angry and like magmumukmuk lang about the problem I have to find a solution asap parang ganun and 
So that's one thing, like in terms of like agility and emotional regulation in the workplace. But then also for people who are who have corporate jobs nine to five, like um, you know, if you want to like even like this ano, yung, um project offbeat, which um honestly like I feel so like I feel that there's just so much potential now. You know, you just really have to start somewhere and um, like any other like startup, it doesn't because there's media startups. There's also like other startup businesses. Now, okay, like if you're really just passionate about it and you have a strong why, there's like a strong burden also to solve like a certain problem. Like whether it's a whether you'll provide a media solution, a design solution, um, where just don't think about the money first. Just think about the impact that you're going to make like yung sacrifice of your time like it's really it really it really can go somewhere talaga kaya just don't give up as long as you know you're so sure about your why's also parang yeah, hustle lang a little bit kaya yan <laughs> <laughs> thank you B for the kind words now um, so yeah thank you B for uh, joining us on this show thank you for taking us off the beaten path. Can you let people know like how, uh, where you are now and how people can contact you? Uh, yeah, so you could follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's bbgo09. So B-E-B-E-G-O-09. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess uh, like maybe a final word from you. What for you is taking the off beaten path? It's hard to be a trailblazer. That's what I could <laughs> say. But then really rewarding also like um because uh, i on like if you if people knew my background like really no one was ever a journalist um i came from a filipino chinese background that was very strong on business and um, i'm also like the eldest in the family so it's really um carving your own path but then it's really like a lot Parang you'll really know where you're graced from. So that's a lot of reliance on God also to like show that yeah. um, you know, and he and he will be the one to give you assurance that you're on the right path because everyone's path is unique. There's no same path. But then um it's so important to also get supporters and the community and the community also who will like help you also. Like whether it's in like the practical sense that there, these are your work friends, or even the emotional sense and emotional sense, which are your friends and family. Na support is really what we need, if especially if we're For taking sure. the off beaten path. Yeah. And amazing, amazing B. Uh, I hope to read your live tweets soon and your articles. Um, we're all, we're supporting you all the way now. So thank you for listening to the show. If you like our show, follow us as well on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube for exclusive content. That's at the Project Offbeat. See you in the next episode. And here's to taking the hashtag off the beaten path. Thank you, B. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.